Good evening. Since you've been sitting for so long, I'd like to start with a little exercise, please. I'd like you to all take your hands and put them together, crossing your having one thumb on top of the other. Everybody who has their left thumb on top, could you please raise your hand? Let's see. Uh, scientific research said, shows that two-thirds of the people in the world have their left thumb on top, but there's no reasoning why. Now, I'd like to ask you to try and do it exactly the opposite way, with the other thumb on top. Feels a bit strange, doesn't it? Yes, I'd like you to close your eyes now, and for the next six minutes, imagine the following. Keeping your hands in that position, in that slightly uncomfortable position. Imagine a child that you know. It can be your own child, or a relative's child, or maybe it's even you as a child. And think of their talents. Imagine, there are no untalented children, but every child is talented differently. Imagine an environment in which children can develop their individual talents. Now, imagine the future of these children. If the children you thought about are about six years old, they will join the workforce around 2030, and they will retire in 2070. Please, imagine their world in 2070. Imagine the working place or working environment that today's children will be working in. It certainly will not look like our present working environment. Imagine, we are preparing children for jobs that do not exist yet, the jobs of the future, prepared for with the tools of the past. Imagine the pace of the world that our children are growing up in today. Imagine, the computer in your smartphone is a million times cheaper, a thousand times more powerful, and 100,000 times smaller than the most powerful computer in 1965. Imagine, there are 3.1 billion Google searches every month. Shift Happens asks, to whom were these questions addressed before Google? Imagine, if Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country in the world, between India and the United States of America. Also, imagine, according to a US Department of Labor, today's learners will have 14 different jobs by the time they are 38. And imagine that the top 10 jobs in demand in 2010 did not even exist in 2004. And imagine that pupils today spend 75% more time on the internet than their teachers. Which brings us back to the child you were imagining and the schools that they attend. Imagine school 100 years ago. Imagine school 50 years ago. Imagine school today. What has changed? Do you see children sitting in rows facing a teacher and a blackboard or a whiteboard? Also imagine, according to a study conducted in German schools, the average concentration span of pupils in a 15-minute class was two minutes not even a third of the duration of this Pecha Kucha presentation. And they all don't concentrate at the same time. <laughs> Imagine classrooms without fear of mistakes. Making mistakes, as we heard today, is essential to learning and creativity. Imagine a school system that does not punish mistakes. So please imagine the classroom again. Now, if your classroom has, again, children sitting in rows, please push the tables and chairs away and create a free space in the classroom. A space in which, imagine, groups of international and local artists will collaborate and work together with teachers and pupils in different types of schools and put creativity in the heart of the school curriculum during school time. Imagine the tools of performing arts, plus music, visual arts, video, and film used in the context of the classroom to increase creativity, increase productivity in different subjects, increase body awareness, social awareness, and global awareness, increase group working abilities and self-esteem, and increase motivation and joy of learning through playfulness. We know today that learning is not a linear process, and that learning by heart does not produce brain activity. So please, try to imagine a national education minister 
who does not want to go back to the basics, but one who would invest in creativity and new methods of teaching and in the future of our children. Now, more than ever before, future generations need creative tools to face the challenges of everyday life. So imagine, again, artistic teams working in schools in Maastricht, Herlen, Parkstadt, Sittard Helen, Hasselt, Liege, Eupen, Aachen, Jülich, already next year, 2011, as part of a pilot project and the bid of Maastricht to become European capital of culture in 2018. Imagine artistic teams working for eight consecutive weeks during school time in your region, discovering, playing, learning, and developing theatrical works while at the same time holding workshops for teachers to develop more creative tools for teaching and learning. Sir Ken Robinson asks, why do schools destroy the creativity of our children? And challenges us to bring on the education revolution because a mere evolution is no longer enough. He also demands to make creativity as important as literacy in today's school curriculum. So imagine the nothing curriculum, the empty space in which the unexpected can grow, where process is more important than results, and in which the children, their talents, and their creativity are at the epicenter of school and education. Now, I must still release you from holding your hands, and I would like to ask you to let go and to fold your arms in front of your chests. Please notice which hand is where, and now try to do it the other way. Thank you very much for your attention.